Madam Secretary, are you in a position to call the roll? Uh, yes, Julie Gillette, the Assistant Secretary, will call the roll. Randy Bruger? Present. Steve Colligan? Present. Ralph Seekins? Should be here momentarily. Debbie Joslin? <coughs> Alice Wake is here. I'm here. Uh, Glenn Clary? Frank McQuarrie? Here. Russ Millette? Here. Becca Zerps? Here. Rex Shattuck? Here. Jason Brampton? Here. Steve Strait? Here. Bruce Schulte? Here. Mike Tariana? Here. Paulette Simpson? Here. Craig Johnson? Kevin Meyer? Is Bert Seven in again? No, Senator, Senator, Senator Gary Stevens is here. Okay, thank you, Senator. And, and the member of the House uh, may well join us in, in a bit. Okay, thanks, Rex. Rhonda Boyles? Here. Pam Raker? Ryan Fitzpatrick? Here. Thank you. Uh, so, is Ralph Seekins on yet? No, Ralph is, is in route. He's in okay, there. got it. Traffic's real bad right now. Um, All right. Well, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> Mike, would you give us an invitation? Sure. Mr. Chairman, could you clarify something for us here? Yes, go ahead. Was there a proxy given? A proxy given for who? I, I thought we heard that somebody had a proxy. Jason Rampton has a proxy from Peter Goldberg. He did not need one since this is a continuation of an adjourned meeting, but he does have a new proxy replacing the original proxy. Oh, we thought, we, we, I, thought you, I thought I heard something about our National Committee woman. There is a proxy, but she, the proxy carrier is not here yet, and I believe <laughs> he has the proxy with him. Uh, it was also faxed. I, I have a digital copy of it. So, <coughs> is that, Who that proxy be? I'm sorry. Who will that proxy be? Uh, Mr. Seekins. Okay, thank you, sir. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for this evening, and we ask you for your wisdom, for your understanding, that we would be civil and. Uh, Give us uh, an appreciation for all sides of the uh, discussions that will take place today and uh, give us insight and Lord, we pray that we would follow your leading and your will. <coughs> Lord, bless this time. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This time I ask you to join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will move to the two items that we move for this agenda specifically today. The first is the complaint against Russ Mollett. And I will ask for uh, Frank McQuarrie to make his presentation and allow the defense to respond. But first I ask the secretary to read the specific charges against Mr. Uh, Mollett. Thank you, Chairman. Just, Chair, just a point of order, if I could. Oh, yes. sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. uh, just we're in a small room. There's lots of it's just some housekeeping things here. Uh, if somebody needs some help, let us know. But it's going to be hot. If you get cold, hot, let us know. We'll try to make it comfortable. Uh, one thing that happened in our last meeting. Uh, this is an SEC meeting. You're all people that are here that are not members of SEC are certainly welcome. But just uh, be respectful. It was a great meeting the last time we had this, and we appreciate that. Uh, we had two issues last time. Some things went missing out of the office. We just ask if you see something, just leave it where it is. The second issue was in the, there's a back door that's a fire escape. You need to get used it. It's out there. You have to kind of wind your way through to get it. But it's a fire escape only. Uh, at our last meeting, we had somebody open the door and people were coming in. And we exceeded our fire uh, allowed uh, people in the house. So, so please, if you see somebody coming in, just turn them back. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Make comments on the Oh, cell phones. Uh, cell phones must be turned off. This is not a requirement of ARP. 
Uh, this is really a health issue. One of our <laughs> members here in the room is uh, has a long history of uh, being ill, made ill by uh, cell phones. It's a syndrome that he's traveled off to uh, Mayo Clinic to have diagnosed, and apparently it's going to be named, the syndrome's going to be named the uh, Friedrich syndrome, apparently. The Randall. Because the Randall. There are none of German doctors. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. And it does affect his health. Thank not, you. Not a matter, if I might just put on the record some matters uh, preliminary before you go ahead with the hearing. Uh, first question I'll ask for you to consider it, do we really want to thwart the will of the delegates of the last convention? The parties here are entitled to a fair hearing. First hearing on 17 January provided insufficient time to retain and consult with counsel. It was a refusal to agree to any reasonable continuance and thus insufficient time to prepare for what took place at the last hearing. Despite our objection, the hearing proceeded on that very day, 17 January. It was insufficient time for the attorney to consult with the respondents before the hearing began. No list of witnesses to be called by the prosecution. Mr. Ross, this is not a trial. It, this is a hearing. I have to make a record, Mr. Chairman, if I might. I, and I, I won't, think I'm going to make my record, and then I won't repeat it the second time that, for the second then hearing. Try to be prompt. Thank you. I'm agreed as fast as I can, but I have to move my lips to do it, and that's what it's going to be. No list of witnesses was to be called by the prosecution that has been furnished. No copies of documents which may be introduced have been furnished. Questioning of Mr. Millett was done by the chairman at the first hearing before Mr. Millett even got the time to consult with counsel. There is a public. This is a public hearing which. The respondents have asked for it yet. There are security guards here who are turning away the public due to lack of room. Mr. Redrick surreptitiously recorded Jack and Debbie Brown, that is, without their knowledge or consent, and then attempted to use it at the 17 January hearing over objection. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Other complaints against Yes, sir. Um, the point of order is recognized. Order. Um, do we have an agenda? We have an agenda for the. We have two items to consider. The hearing on Mr. Millett's case and the hearing on Ms. Brown's case, and that is the full extent of the agenda for tonight. We have adopted a time allotment for the first case and the second case of one hour. Does this fit into that agenda? No. Is this there is, an opening remarks? This is this is extra information. I'm allowing him a few minutes to do this. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question, Mr. Chairman. Does that mean that the that the disorder of the day will apply to the yes. evening as well? We're, we're continuing the session, so I see no reason that that order of the day as adopted does not apply. Other complaints against other officers have been sitting without action for up to three years. Why were those four complaints taken out of order? These four complaints taken out of order. It is a complaint about the lack of proper notice of various meetings and improper provisions made for teleconferences made in my letters to Mr. Redrick. This hearing is premature, seeks to remove Mr. Millett from elected office before he has even assumed that office. Apparently that was recognized as a problem and so after taking testimony the matter was eventually continued until the parties took office that is 1 February. Then it was unilaterally moved up to tonight. We objected changes of date at the last minute. Difficulty in getting defense documents to those participating by teleconference. There was a refusal to take testimony under oath. <coughs> Facilities were <coughs> insufficient. The public was turned away. Uh, the transcript that we obtained and the CD that Mr. Redrick furnished was incomplete. And uh, indeed, uh, I have affidavits here from court reporters that indicate that it appears to have been uh, changed or certain parts left out. Mr. Ross, I'd be very careful about inventing facts. I don't have an invented facts. I can show you the affidavits if you like. We will let I, I will. <coughs> and the affidavit says, I observed the recording, listened to, and transcribed has been edited, altered, or otherwise modified. 
and I observe the recording listed to transcribed and edited, altered or otherwise modified two affidavits, Sasha Carlisle and Lorna Marish. I can introduce those in the record if I want. But uh, oh, okay. the complaints were not submitted to the proper parties and not considered by the proper committees. There was a withholding of financial documentation. What is there to hide? Why has money moved out of the ARP account? Why have there been no annual audits? Why propose a rule change to dispense with the annual audits? The lack of a court reporter, I don't know if that's been taken care of tonight. No proper grounds for removal, complete breakdown of due process. And Mr. again, Chairman, I ask that all complaints be dismissed and we begin to rebuild our Republican Party and that constitutes the issues that I like the members of the SCC to consider. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Kennedy. No, I, I, I withdraw my request. I just wanted an idea of how long this would take. Thank you. At this time, I believe as we work through the day, we will respond to the points that have some merit. Uh, at this time, I'd first like to call Mr. Culligan to respond to your absurd allegation that we edited the tape not mine, sir. It's uh, two affidavits. That's, and it doesn't say who did You pulled the intent. Uh, let me just ask a simple question. You went with me to Kenai in December to make a copy of what was said. No, this is the reference that This says the 90 minutes, the audio recording, 90 minutes for the last Republican State the Executive Committee on January 23rd. I have no idea. We didn't provide you anything. That was a closed meeting. You were not invited. We, our parliamentarian clearly ruled that, as you saw in the comments sent by our attorney to, to you, that, that was, there was nothing out of the order with that. And as a result, I will not discuss that topic further. That was just a, a scheduling conference as would be customary with, for the body. All right, apparently they have the wrong tape. Uh, the the I have no idea what you're talking about, and I'm positive it's wrong. Well, apparently the uh, transcription person may not know what they're talking about either because they may have the dates wrong. Thank you. Uh, that was one down. That was directed to Mr. Steve Strait, not Mr. Steve Cullen. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just for the sake of this issue is now being <laughs> Council has agreed that it may not be relevant. Thank you for your assistance nonetheless. Uh, when they call it Culligan Man, then it kind of scares me. It's just no CEO. Hey, Culligan Man. Okay. Spelled differently. Okay. At this time, <coughs> I would like the secretary to read the formal charges that have been filed relative to Mr. Millett's activities. Article 10, removal from Republican Party office. Section 1, grounds for removal. Any person holding elected ARP office may be removed from office for any of the following reasons. A, engagement in any activities prohibited or contrary to these rules or RNC rules. B, failure to carry out or perform duties of the office to which he was elected. And the charges that were submitted by Frank McQuery against Russ Millett are as follows. Russ Millett is the chair-elect of ARP. When running for, for office, Mr. Millett claimed to be a lifelong Republican. Uh, in fact, the State of Alaska Division of Election Records demonstrate, demonstrate that Mr. Millett did not register as a Republican until the 17th of February, 2012, just weeks before the state convention. Alaska Division of Election Records also revealed that Mr. Millett had previously changed from undeclared to Republican in 2010, just before the ARP state convention, and then changed his registration back to undeclared shortly after the convention. Mr. Millett's responsibility as chair-elect of the ARP was to act as statewide finance chair through the election cycle. His role was to raise money to be deposited in the ARP or Alaska Republican candidate coffers. While it appears that Mr. Millett did raise money after his election, none of the money was ever deposited into an ARP account nor is there any indication that it was donated to any Republican campaign in the state of Alaska. Mr. Millett collected money as early as June 2012, reconvening at the state convention at the ACS facility in Anchorage. Mr. Millett failed to report those fundraising activities to, the, to APOG. 